Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hank. This is episode 63. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hank. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building, episode 63. Introduce yourself to the audience. What's going on? Y'all know what it is. Y'all favorite fat freckle man, your favorite coach's favorite coach, Coach Not, aka Coach Splash. And he's going to drop the other aka because he never let me live it down. Copy that. Um, I'm just waiting for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> one the, the one half of the dynamic duo known as the Two Kings Two and Five, and also half of another dynamic duo known as the Life Be Life and Podcast. What up, yo? Shouts out to my man Nutmeg now making his second appearance <laughs> on the podcast. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, shout yeah. out to my man, my man now is now paid talent. He's now the professional. You know what I'm hey. saying? <laughs> and shout out to my man now who came up with the hashtag Hype Taught Me. Um. Sure. All right, here we go. Let's hit the rundown, y'all. Bruce, you ready? Monday, every Monday, E-Block Radio Network. Every Monday, 2 p.m. on the E-Block Radio Network. GFT Radio Network, 2 p.m. every Tuesday. Wednesdays is 216 to Blend. Shout out to 216 to Blend. Uh, brand new situation over there. Y'all go ahead and support the situation. Follow them on the gram. Hit the website. You know what I'm saying? Check out the Hot Hustle podcast every Wednesday from 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Um, Thursday, WTNUPhilly.com. Friday, I say podcast radio network is you good out there, bro? I know you had a situation. Uh, THC radio network every Saturday, 10 a.m. My bad. THC media. THC's name is now the THC media every Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday, we still trying to fill that slot in, y'all. Custom Hustle World. Custom Hustle World is where you can find your custom hustle jerseys, jackets, T-shirts, free wristbands with all your purchases, uh, sweatsuits, got the joint on now for those who are watching, you know what I'm saying? Those are the Custom Hustle sweatpants right there. Um, Custom Hustle World, though, on Instagram and Twitter. Custom Hustle World. You get all your custom needs done. Uh, H2H Cleaning also is my cleaning company that is at H2H Cleaning. It's a tri-state area situation, but if you make it worth my while, I will slide. Now, episode 63, got my man Nutmeg now in the building. Um, <laughs> This is what we're going to do this week, y'all, is toxic relationships. Toxic relationships is the topic. Uh, you can use that for any relationship you want. Uh, it can be with your kids, with your baby mom, with your wife, unfortunately, with your husband, uh, <laughs> with your best friend, or your, however you need to, you know what I'm saying, work that Man, out. Toxic oh. friendships. Nah, we go with the guests first. All right. Um, so, like you My said. My bad. Hold up. I did a bad job of setting up the question because I just threw it up. Toxic for him to, to go. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, listen, I'm ready to go either way. Pay talent. You got to be. <laughs> My bad is signs of a of a toxic relationship. What okay. are those signs that you could have a toxic relationship? And like I said, we could use those for different relationships to dive into. My bad. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Over dependency is one sign for sure. For sure. That person that makes you feel like they can't get nothing done unless you help them get it done or unless you do it for them. Like that, that codependency to where I call it over dependency, you know what I'm saying? And you now you feel like, you know, it's something wrong with you if you can't help them. Meanwhile, they supposed to be handling their own business, but you know, they making you feel like you are responsible for everything. That's a big sign of a, a, a toxic relationship, whether it's a friendship, you know, family member, like, I can't get it done if you don't help me. And they're not even trying to get it done. And then if you don't help them or if you ever say no, now you're the bad guy. All right. So you kind of jumped on you jumped on me where I was going. Well, my situation, what I was going to say is, uh, I know this is kind of being a reoccurring theme, but it's just kind of what's going on right now in my life. Um, it's a growth. A person who doesn't allow you to grow in any different situation. Because like I said, you can use this for your, it could be your spouse who doesn't right. want to grow. Who doesn't want to change? It could be your best friend, cousin, sister, whomever the situation could be. And it's one of those things where I was trying to turn this one into a topic, but this is kind of, I'm going to intertwine it in to make these the same thing is, when do you get to be the real you? Because mm -hmm. the person who knew you at 16, when they run into you at 26 says, oh, that ain't you. You know, you never did this, that or whatever. But one, we can't have it where we want to say, 
I made mistakes in the past and don't try to hold my past against me. Right. And don't allow me to be able to grow or then still try to keep that person in that box, though. Because the guy who had a gun when he was 18 and went to jail for a year or two, came home and started a construction company and is now doing deals across whatever city. When he runs into whoever, they're still thinking about him as that guy. He's grown, evolved, and turned into a whole different person. But if the situation is toxic, they want to keep you in that box. They don't want you to ever grow, ever. Maybe you were just wrong. Like, you know what I'm saying? I could have grew up my whole life thinking the wrong thing because I was shown the wrong thing as a child and I never tested it. I never, you know, I never questioned it because it's what my mom told me. It's what my dad told me. It's what my uncle said. And then I find out now at 34 or at 44 that, yo, it was wrong. You know what I'm saying? So now you got to reevaluate your whole situation. But the person who wants to keep you in that box and doesn't want you to grow, doesn't want you to look at anything differently, and they want you to be that one thing that it is because it makes them comfortable, because it makes it better for them, that is toxic. That is a problem. Yeah, you touched on that with Coach Rock in the previous episode, a couple of episodes ago. You know, that person that knew you from your past only one. Yeah, shout out to my man. Shout out to Kim Rock. Shout out to Coach Rock. Um, But yeah, it, that's an absolute uh that's an absolute fact that somebody who won't allow you to grow is definitely a toxic sign. Um what's another one that I relate to really well? Um manipulation, man. Manipulation is definitely a sign of a toxic relationship. Uh that person that you know plays on your insecurities or you know um plays on your shortcomings or whatever it is to get what they want. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, that person who knows you from their past. All right. Well, I know you used to drink or whatever. Right. So, you know, maybe you had a drinking problem. You, 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 you finally, you know, however many months sober. And the minute me and you have an issue, I got to throw that back in your face. You know what I'm saying? In order to try to get you to prove to me that, you know, you this better person now. So now I'm leaving genuine- back down the road to start drinking again. And if you're in a situation where somebody has your best interest at heart, it should never be a situation where I'm going to try to do something to demean or belittle you. Facts. Like, there should be certain lines and certain... This is why uh, I don't even remember, remember which episode this was because it was a while ago. It was uh, the most important thing is always respect. If you have a certain amount of respect for somebody, there's certain lines you will never cross. Like, if you're... Even if your mom is the worst of the worst... Majority of the time, because you can't speak for everybody's situation, it's certain things that you ain't going to never say. You can right. think it, you can feel it, and we can all know it to be true, but you ain't going to say it because it's a certain amount of respect that you have for that situation. If your wife was this, that, or whatever, your husband was this, that, or whatever, it's certain lines that you're not going to cross if you got a certain amount of respect for that person. All of that, I was mad stuff is for people who 15 or 20 because I was mad and you in that situation, okay, you got the excuse of youth where you couldn't control yourself type of thing. You shouldn't be 45 and still not able to control yourself. You shouldn't be 33 and still so much you can't control yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's a topic in and of itself, that whole, oh, I only said that because I was mad. That's We might have to get together for that whole thing because... I mean, hey, that, you know, that's, life be life. That's, life. A personal, <laughs> that's a personal, like, itch for me, man. Like, it bothers me like nothing else. Like, I'd rather you say something. I'd rather you say something you believe about me that's not true because you believe it's true then for you to say something that you know is not true, or even if it is true and you saying it just to hurt me, you know what I'm saying? I was about say, to say it's not even that it ain't true. The whole purpose of it is to hurt you, but it, yeah, it's the crux it of it, the whole, hurt, even if it is true. The, the crux of the situation though is though, like I said, there's certain things that if you have an intimate relationship with somebody of years and year upon years, you know those buttons to push, you know them secrets, and you know them things that are up under the rug. The reason why it's up under there is because we ain't talking about that. We ain't addressing that. And you know if you address that, it's going to turn into a whole nother situation. That's why yeah. I said you can know some things about your wife and it'd be like, damn, I really didn't want to hear that, but I know it. But I'm yeah. never going to say that to her. You might yeah. know some stuff about your husband and it's like, ah, I can't ever broach that subject. Because <laughs> if you broach this, we got a problem now. Yeah. It's one of them situations where it's like the glass is broke now. You know what I'm saying? We're never going to be able to fix this mirror. It's shattered. Not it's, even just broke. Yeah. Shattered. We can sweep it up. We can piece. Well, you're gonna try to piece it together and glue it back, and it's never gonna look the same. Like, yeah, you're never gonna look at that person the same. 
Like, it's why we, uh, one of them things that, um, shout out to BTG. BTG had did that episode about, um, does your love conditional? And it was like, mm-hmm. I think, all, I think all love is conditional because at any moment things can change. It only takes two seconds for everything to change. One statement, one wrong action. And now everything is different. Like you'll never look at that person the same again. So yeah, I, all them, all love has to be conditional. Um, but towards what you were saying, though, yeah, to start that, huh? <laughs> As I'm saying, you know, hey man, shout out to my guys over there, BTG. I think that was Face pulled that one out. Um, <laughs> but uh, something that you was touching on is this is a loyalty. People hit you with loyalty as another toxic situation where, like you said, playing on their emotions. Telling them that like, oh, you're not for the squad or you're not for the gang if you're not doing this, that, or whatever. And it's like, again, when we were a younger group of individuals, it was perfectly fine for us to think that when you would, you know, like Nelly and them had the dirty ENT, we all we got. Everybody <laughs> adopted that, you know what I'm saying, for their gang and their squad. Right. But once you got kids and a wife and like, look, I can't get caught in a situation doing something with you. And now I got to depend on you to take care of my family. Because I know you got kids that you don't do nothing for. So how am I going to think you're going to take care of mine? Like, right. But even so, like you said, in terms of how you could pull this into like, you know, a relationship, like if you with a person, you're like your spouse, that whole if you love me thing, bro. Like that, that can be definitely playing on your loyalty because, you know, if you do love a person, you want to show, you want to do your best to show them and you want them to feel that and you want them to know that and recognize it. So when they start trying to get you to do stuff that's uncomfortable, that's like out of bounds for you. And it's like, well, if you love me, you would do this. Like, come on, we're not, we not teenagers trying to get shorty to put her mouth on the thing or, you know, get her to do that thing that she, you know, not supposed to be doing. If you really love, no, we grown. You're not supposed to be doing that. I see. That's again. That's a toxic. That's a, that could be a toxic relationship right there. Where it is the, the one person plays on the other person's emotions that constantly manipulate them to get what they want. Right. And the sad part about that is that's your husband or your wife. So it ain't so easy as like you said when you was you were saying you was playing in the young boy. You could just walk away from that. If she didn't right. do it, the girlfriend might do it, or the other one. Or the, let me see. This situation is like so. We got a mortgage and three kids, and two cars. You know what I'm saying? So like. I can't just walk away. And the problem right. in them situations be the person who doesn't recognize that that's the situation that they're in. Yep. Until, again, somebody breaks that glass or somebody brings it up and then you go, damn, that's exactly what she always say. Or that's exactly what he always do. And then you start to look at it because the hardest thing, like I, one of the things I bring up all the time is the easiest thing for somebody to tell you in your relationship is, nah, you should leave her. Facts. Because they ain't they ain't invested no time, no energy. They don't have anything to do with that. You know what I'm saying it's it that easy for them because it's that easy for them because they're not in there. You right. know what I'm saying? They can easily say, Hey, how, how you don't see this, that, or whatever. It's kind of hard to see it while you're in it. When you look Ooh. back on it, you can reflect and go, damn, how I ain't never peeped that. But it's hard to see that stuff from on the inside. And right. most of the time, this be the problem that we have with these relationships be we don't have these real conversations. Most people don't have a real conversation about where are you going, where are you trying to go, where are you trying to get to? Are we trying to get there or am I trying to get there? Mm. That's going to be the situation if we're talking to friends, to cousins. Like I said, any relationship, it could be that. Like, yo, look, like you said, this, like I brought up the example of, yo, look, I know, yeah, we had the gun charges back in the day when we was young, dumb, and reckless, but now I got responsibilities. I got stuff to do. I can't still be looking at it like that. So I'm trying to go this way. You might still be trying to go over here and like, yo, I love you. Go ahead. Because I'm over here. I got stuff to do. I got things to take care of. I can't be caught up in that. But if you got these toxic situations, people will continue to try to play on your emotions and try to test that yeah. like try to pull you back in because they keep the people will continue to play that loyalty card because yes try to it make it seem like not it doesn't even that matter it matters, to them as much as it matters to you not even that it matters so much but it's your loyalty are to different things at different times this is again right. you're trying not to let me ever evolve and grow into the person that i want to become or the things that i want to do your loyalty can't still be to you your same two homies that you had since forever. Once you got a wife and kids, you know what I'm saying? Wow. We can't be, we can't hang every day if I got a wife and kids. Because guess what? My son's not acting like me or taking heed to the things that I'm saying if he's sitting here on YouTube every day. Facts. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, how are you ever going to get his... How is he going to... Write it to your wife. Yeah, yeah, copy. That's just like, uh, again, something else we touched on a lot a while ago when uh, you were told that you don't need a nigga for nothing. It wasn't talking about your husband. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, Remember that. Can't, can't have that kind of attitude towards your husband. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't need a nigga for nothing. Which is actually an episode that's coming up on How to Host Podcast. Why don't you stay tuned for that one? It'll be somewhere in the late 60s, maybe 70s. <laughs> <laughs> But now, do you think, uh, if you look now at your situation, do you believe that you have any toxic relationships? I'll be honest. I have a couple. I definitely have a couple. And what makes you maintain What makes you maintain those toxic relationships? The fact that it took me too long to realize it. <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest. It, it's just like, it, it's just a situation where, like, two of these situations is where, it's like, it's not so much I'm maintaining it, but it's like, I ain't cut boy completely off. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a family member or whatever. And I ain't cut him completely off, but I deal with him differently now. You know what I'm saying? So I don't need to cut. See, one, shout out to you for admitting that you have toxic relationships and you recognize that. Most people, the number one is to admit we have a problem. Uh, right. I, think everybody, I think everybody has toxic relationships. I think everybody has toxic people. And that are always involved in your situation because nobody is just a thousand percent happy all the time every day. Right. Um, so I would say even in them situations, yeah, I absolutely got them too. All right, we all do. Uh, and those situations though, see for me, it would be like, if I understand and recognize, cause it took me a long time to realize like, damn, this is really what this is. Like, and once I get, once I got the realization of that, it's like I can love you from a distance. There's nothing wrong with loving somebody from a distance. I don't need to cut you off to love you from a distance. I'm going. Mm-hmm. I got this. Like a, I got this going on. You got that going on. And the two things just ain't meeting at this time. When I see you, hey, what's going on? You chilling? Oh, damn. How the kids? Oh, damn. He got big. Hey, yeah. She's 12 now. Like you know what I'm saying, we can go through all of that, but we can just leave it where it is. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to try to hold on to 2001. Facts. Because it's not 2001 no more. We could laugh about the time, yeah, you know, every now and again, but if every time I see you, we're going to talk about that, and that's like, we ain't going nowhere. We don't need to separate ourselves. Life is going to separate us. I think you muted. What you say? You were saying something? All right. No, I couldn't hear you for a second. Go ahead. Yeah, like uh, like I said, like in them situations, life gonna separate you. You don't have to pull yourself away from that person because they going one way, you going another. And it's like we don't have to have no ill feelings or malice or I don't mm-hmm. feel nothing. I don't want nothing bad for you. But no. I know for me, you're not you're not uh, you're not looking to help my situation currently. If you're not looking to help the situation, we must move on. Like this is it's not personal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Right. And like in that situation, it's not like he was out to get me. It's not like he was trying to, you know, do anything to me or whatever. It's just kind of like, you know, sometimes the way somebody else living their life, like if you support them and being with them, it's going, it's going to drain you a little bit. Like the problems that you getting yourself into and the way that you carry yourself in order for me to care for you the way that I used to, it's going to take time off me. It's going to take energy off me, not money, fortunately, but, um, it could relate to my money because if my time and my energy is affected, then that affects how how good I am and what right. I have to do to get my money. So um, in, in that case, it was just kind of like, like I said, I had to learn to deal with him differently. Like, all right, bro, you know, it is what it is. I'm not, you know, I'm not dissing you. I'm not going to talk bad about you. Like you said, I don't want nothing bad to happen to you. But you got to be over there. I got to stay over here. Best wishes. Like, yeah, I run into you at the market. We could bust it up in the ice cream aisle. <laughs> uh, but yeah, with these joints, like uh, with these toxic situations, like for everybody, I will all, like look into your situations, all of them. Actually, evaluate them, and it, regardless to who the person is, make a strong assessment of the situation. And you knowing that individual will tell you if we can have a conversation about this, if. We go if we're trying to grow in the same situation or in the same way, because sometimes you like it's just life grows you apart, and it's nothing wrong with that. Whether that be 
again, your husband, your wife, it can be that situation where y'all just didn't grow together. Like at 26, we were great for each other, but at 44, it's not working out. At 34, at 31, it might not be working out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but make a strong assessment, evaluate the situation and see if it's something there. See if we can see if we can get on the same accord. See if we can push this thing together or see if we just here. We just we ain't going the same way. Right. Um, and some people you know you can't even have a conversation with because you see the level of where they at. Well, I, that was the first thing I said. Make the after you evaluate and say, all right, yo, me and now I got a toxic relationship. Can I have a conversation with now about that? Fair. You know what I'm saying? Some people you'll know, like, oh no, nah, can't talk to that nigga. He ain't gonna listen. It's gonna be frivolous and pointless for us to even talk about it because it's not a conversation, it's just us arguing. And if yep. we argue and screaming back and forth, that's not a conversation. You ain't listening to my point, I ain't listening to yours. We just both wait to talk. You know what I'm saying? So all you're gonna do is all you gonna do is get yourself into a situation that you don't want to be in. Facts. Um all right now. Shouts out to my man. You know, he got a new situation going on. Life be life, and let's talk about it now. Oh man, shout out to uh first and foremost, I always got a shout out to the you know the the OG podcast as we refer to it now, the two kings two on five podcast, and my partner Ace from over there. You know what I mean? A.c.e. Uh, my brother from another, but definitely shout out to you know Big Me. You AKA leave out the funniest. Goddess. You left out. You left out something in Ace's rundown. Oh, the funniest, man. funniest, the funniest nigga in Uptown, man. My bad, you absolutely right. The funniest yeah, locked in nigga, a locked in nigga like myself can throw that at you. you know what I'm saying that's man. the type of thing when people throw little nuggets like that at you. You go, I know he's. How you know the end? Factuals, <laughs> but that's out the Ace though. <laughs> Definitely, it's something we used to say on the OG podcast. That's why I always refer to it. It's something we used to always say, you know. What I mean, of course, we have recording schedules, we have topics, we have plans, we have guests, and sometimes things just don't go the way you plan. And it's like you can sit there and cry, why me, and get all frustrated. But sometimes you could just realize this is the way life has always been, and the way life is always going to be. You know, curveballs are always going to come. Like there's never a point in life where you're going to have everything work out your way for a whole month week year nothing like every day there's an opportunity for something to go i don't wrong. think you can make it a day where that's why i said every go- day there's an opportunity for something to go wrong every day. You, you could be on vacation at the greatest resort ever and ah they ran out of shrimp but you really <laughs> you ain't even mad about it because you just you ain't even mad about it because you won't get the crab instead you but feel you me really wanted them that's shrimps. The- <laughs> That's the yeah. approach that we just would say, you know, like, we, or we always talk to our listeners and try to let them know, but we don't want to give them no sob stories. So we just be like, man, listen, life be life sometimes, man. And, and that's just really what it is. So that morphed into the name of the, you know, the spinoff, because again, curveball, we didn't know that when we planned for season two, that we would be, you know, not having Ace on the mic. You know, that wasn't something that, you know, we knew at the beginning of season one, midway through season one or anything. We was literally planning on wrapping up season one when that development came came to be, where he was like, you know, I kind of want to step into the background. All right, cool. No problem. So everybody's yeah, expecting mean, season two or two kings, and now he's like, yeah, that's not going to work with me and Mish being two kings. I can't just replace my bro. He means too much. That's our, That was our baby. We grew that. So we can't just spin that off with, like, bringing another dude in and being like, he's the replacement king. Hell no. And the one thing I always I kept telling you was, look, Misha's here every week. We're gonna have to like do something to get her sure name involved here. Okay, two kings Let's and a start. queen or something because she's here every week. <laughs> like, it was a certain point where yeah, she was there almost every week. So, uh, and we was trying to get her to do her own podcast because we like, man, you got your own flavor. You know, you gonna bring your own uh, uh, dynamic your own audience. So, you know, we was trying to push her to do hers. And then she was kind of like, well, I'm not 100% sure. Or, you know, if that's what I want to do to carry it on myself. So then when this development happened, it was just kind of like, well, why would I look, uh, you know what I mean? Why would I look outside? Why would I, you know, outsource when I got talent in house already? Um, so this is one thing I'll say though, y'all already got a chemistry together. Thanks. Um, like you said, if Ace wants to go behind the scenes, it's perfectly fine. You still, you, you Ace, uh, Ace, no, you're listening to this. You know what I'm saying? You still come up with topics, still help out with the production side of things. You know what I'm saying? All of that. There's a lot of work that goes into this stuff before we hit the camera. Before Fair. we hit the camera and the mics is when all the work happens. This part is the easy part. We, 
we can go pull up on we can go to Market Street right now and pull up on any bus stop and ask two people, you know what I'm saying? Yo, you want to talk about uh toxic relationships? You know what I'm saying? And you can turn out a great episode. But the work happens, you know what I'm saying, all of that other stuff. So Ace don't want to be on the camera. Shout out to Ace, you retired after this season. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, it happens, Gail Sayers. <laughs> um, <laughs> just you know what I'm saying, all of that other work, though, you can still be involved in. And yeah. That's why I said though, yeah, y'all gotta get you gotta get Misha official title, man. Can't have her keep being I ain't check, I got a chick on there and they keep talking about two niggas. Like, what's going on? Is this a <laughs> what is the situation over here? Yeah, you know I'm saying, but nah, she was so clutch that, like you said, we already had the chemistry. Uh, she's already knowing how we move, so it was just that easy for you know me and her to pick up on what we have and carry it into you know this new podcast. So we about two episodes in. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh yeah, we two episodes in the third one. The third one is coming. So, you know, we got a good little situation over there. We kind of we kind of having some of the similar conversations. But this time around, we, we really kind of want to be solution based. Like we want to try to come to some kind of conclusion. Like Let's have some answers. If we're going to talk about toxic relationships and let's talk about how we get out of them. You know what I'm saying? If we're going to talk about this whole, you know, wage pay gap, then let's talk about solutions on how to fix it. If we're gonna talk about you know uh, the 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 disconnect between black men and black women, let's come up with some suggestions on how just in your daily activities, you know, your daily interactions between black men and black women, how to put more positive energy into it, even when somebody's coming with negative energy. So that's the way that's the spin on the new podcast. So I had a conversation with somebody yesterday uh, about this same situation where. Uh, if I come to you and say, hey, nah, I don't like when y'all do such and such on the podcast, but I don't have a solution for it, then you, what are you bringing it up for? Right. Like, I got no problem if somebody tell me, yo, I think you should do this or I think you should do that. Or I don't like this or I don't like that. All right, so what do you think I should do in, in, instead of it? I'm open to suggestions as long as you got solutions. If you got criticism and no solution to the problem, then copy. I appreciate it. Like, <laughs> that's all I'm going to hit you with. Because... Right. Again, we can have a conversation because you can't always know everything. You know what I'm saying? You got to be open. To, you got to be open to growing, learning, and you know what I'm saying? Collabing with people. And you can't take offense to everything somebody says. Every time somebody tells you this is the greatest episode I ever heard in my life, don't twist your face up and all of that. Find out why it's not. Try to figure yeah. it out and grow and get the solution. You know what I'm saying? Get the answer to the problem. So yeah. beautiful thing there. It's one of them things with, they always did on Two Kings was y'all will go Y'all go long and y'all will have so many different uh, joints that it was like, hmm, I can take that. I can use that. Because I've plugged plenty of joints from y'all, but like I always tell people, if I'm going to pluck your joint, I will definitely give you the credit for it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But I love that uh, those like uh, long form discussion type joints. Yeah. The only difference here is I just want to get you to come back next week. So, you know what I'm saying? We're going to go long right. form, but not too long. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But um, yeah. When are we dropping? Uh, life be life, and when are we dropping? So, um, like I said, the podcast is out now. It's on Spotify, Anchor, Google. No, I mean, what day? What day so are we dropping? Day? Okay, so yeah. the schedule. So the schedule is usually going to be on Thursday mornings, somewhere between seven and eight. Thursday Copy morning. That. That's so usually our drop date. So on your Thursday morning oh, commute. We're working on getting morning. on another platform. So when we get that, when we get the uh, schedule for that platform, we'll definitely update everybody via IG and you know all the other you know social media platforms we're on to let them know when that when they're going to be able to hear it on that platform. Copy that. And uh, before we do go, you already know. Now nah, I appreciate you coming on episode sixty three. Uh, just before we wrap this one up, this was something that I wanted to know. From you, what okay. was your experience though doing the how to uh, how to hustle live show that we did in February? What was okay. your experience from doing that? It was dope for me, man. First of all, like you said, paid talent is my first time, you know, becoming paid talent. It was uh, learning how to be a pro at it, like how you always say, you know, you always got to be ready. Like you threw a curveball at me for a question. It's like, damn, I haven't even had this conversation yet, and I was stuck for a few seconds. And it's kind of like if I'm in a position to you know, put on for my podcast and put on for the people who's with me on my podcast. 
it just reminded me, be ready to go for every single thing. Even if you didn't talk about necessarily that topic before, find a way to hop right into it. You know what I'm saying? You know, take the lead and just jump, go forward with it. But it was definitely good being able to interact with a crowd. You know, people like literally see your listeners and stuff like that. It was live, man. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. Um, the one thing, like I always tell people when we do the podcast, we got the one topic and the rest of it is based off your answers. And it was the same thing with the live show. I told you all about the one topic, but the rest of it is like you said, you got to be prepared. Always be prepared because you never know what you're going to walk into. Shout out again to BTG when they did the interviews with the comedians at their live show. Nice. I didn't know that they wanted me to do those interviews. I wasn't prepared at all for that. Me You'll neither. never know it. You'll never know it, though, when you listen to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They tapped me and said, come on, we're going to do these joints. Oh, we are? Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had, they had me feeling after you leave, after you left. Yeah, it, t- it told me when I walked down the, the front steps, you came up the back steps. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Yeah, we was eight tickets, man. Eight tickets shy of a sellout. <laughs> so we gotta get the we gotta get them the other eight people in the sell building. Next time, we gonna get the sellout. We gotta apologize to people and tell them, oh man, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, hey, listen, we ain't turning you away. You know what I'm saying we, we not. Yeah, yeah, you right. We'll you right. The, we'll Even throw the fire marshal. We'll, you right. We'll throw the we'll throw the fire marshal a little something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, I appreciate you for coming on. though. now that was episode sixty three. We right. are. Out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>